Uh, so we are simple legal. Uh, we are a matter management, spend management company, sometimes uh, called eBilling. And, and so we've uh, actually been around as a software company since about 2013. Uh, we existed for a little over a decade prior to that as a consulting company and more of a general data analytics company. So if you bought Cognos BI or BI or one of those tools, we would make two things for you. Uh, we ended up working with insurance companies and other financial uh, services companies. Uh, a lot of that certainly was on the litigation side. And so one of the things that, uh, that we learned through that process working with those companies outside of financial services is the difference between what you're looking at and what maybe the litigation attorneys at, certainly the different types of matters. You know, if you're going to have an invoice with I think one or three line items on it, you'll have many matters. So when you look at billing at sort of one matter per invoice or multiple matters on a single invoice, you know, we certainly understand the benefits of having multiple matters on one invoice, so you're not going through hundreds of invoices at a time to, to get those things pushed through your process and over to A and B. Um, the biggest difference is certainly going to be the volume of matters, right? Whereas in litigation, hopefully there's sort of very few, uh, but then they tend to be fairly large. Uh, but then with the IP side, whether it's uh, patent prosecution or trademark filing, you're going to have uh, many, many matters. We have customers with tens of thousands of, of matters. So the way that we solve for this and the way that we, you know, we really like to work with IP Folio is every IP right that is in IP Folio can be transferred over to Simple Legal. So we really link together your IP rights to your e-building matters. And that way, you know, certainly you and then hopefully no one else on your team uh, is having to manually enter any of these. Uh, the integration is through an API, so you're not taking a file transfer and having to manually upload a file anywhere. All of this integration happens completely in the background. You're going to see the demo here shortly where we're going to click a button just to push it through just so we don't have to wait for, I think it's every five minutes or something and syncs up, but uh, we will see how an IP right shows up in your e-building system. And then, and then really the, the interesting part comes with, with you in the middle where you have your IPs, uh, your IP rights in IP folio. Uh, you have you know, a company like IPAN or, or really anyone that's handling the prosecution and the filing of the office action responses as well, where this is all connected now. So you have your IP right in IP folio, the billing matter and, and everything that needs to go to accounts payable comes over to simple legal. We send back the billing ID, so whether it's a PO or, or the matter ID. So when you're looking at billing and looking at an invoice that comes from that provider, is it per matter? You certainly don't want to go and enter those in manually. I mean, we've seen that from customers that have switched to us where they said, well, I just have this one big matter that's basically just all patents because I can't go and enter hundreds or thousands of matters at a time. Um, and so we can send that information back, back to IPAN, back to your, your your law firms. And they come through and, and then submit those bills to us and no one in that in that chain is manually manually entering information. Uh, certainly none of you. So with kind of that through with the slides, we're gonna kind of get into the, the demo here. Rupert's gonna help me. So we're gonna be in IP folio and in simple legal. Um, there'll certainly be opportunities for questions. One of the things that I'd, I'd love to hear from the audience here since this is an IP folio user group is what information from your spend management system or from your e-billing system would you like to have in IP Folio? Right? Certainly, the, you know, the, the biggest piece of data we have is around cost. So if it's cost for each IP right, if it's cost at a business unit level, if it's total cost, if it's individual invoices, if it's task codes, we'd love to know what information you'd like to see go back into IP Folio from, from us or you know, from whoever else you have to be using. So with that, we can check it Thanks, Nate. And so I will assist with the first part of the demo and show um, what we do in IP Folio, and then let Nate take back over again to show a little bit what things look like in Simple Legal. I will go back to my demo system, and I can almost find a random record, but perhaps we go back to one of those we touched earlier today. Well, you know what? I might just do a random one. So here we have, and um, so the typical use case would be uh, from your invention disclosure, as Amy has illustrated, the decision making process, invention review board, patent review board, at some point you decide, hey, we're going to file a patent, you create the patent matter, you send it out to the law firm, as we've seen earlier. And at that point, the 
pain the, the, the data maintenance nightmare starts if you have an egoing system and you want a matter for each of these IP rights, which are those patent applications for the law firm to build against, you also have to go to the egoing system and create the matter there. And then if things change, if you change the law firm, if you change the PO number, whatever, you always have to update both systems. And at a certain volume, this becomes very, very painful. So that was really the core pain point that we tried to address in this first um, um, iteration here of our interface. Similar to IPAN, we have quite a lot of other ideas what to do in the future. Bring back cost data from simple legal so you can slice and dice it in IP folio with all the matching up to office actions, um, spending caps, building caps, and so on. So there's a lot of um, interesting ideas we have to take that further. But for now, we're really solving that um, pretty um, clear and still, you could say small, but on a scale, it's a massive pain point to just not manually create matters in both systems. So I'm on a random IP right here. Let's see who the law firm is. This is the Fish law firm. Let's take a different law firm because I'm not sure whether Fish is set up in our simple legal. Let's see. Huh. Is that we call that? Oh, wait, give me a second. You know what? I'm not. Thank you. <laughs> so so we, we are juggling between different IP folio version instances here, and we um, I should be in this one, and here I probably should find that matter that I sent out earlier. Let's take a look. Um, P95.3, this is a patent family. Uh, let's just find a... Because these two have already created, we do want to show it on the fly. That's why I want to show a random IP right. We will just assign it to that Baker law firm here, so it shows up on their dashboard. Um, Baker Potts, that's the one. And we got to save. And now at this point, there is a typically it's said the systems communicate back and server to server, and so every full hour. Yeah, before you. Maybe we just go with the simple and we'll see that it's not there. Yes, please. <laughs> sure. So we'll take a look. So what we're going to do is just drop into our matters. And there aren't very many in here. I'm going to go with mouse. So there aren't very many in here. We just have uh, the five. And so now if we sync it over, then we'll see that it shows up. Yeah, thank you. So this happens, standard configurations at the full hour. So you create a new matter, IP right matter fully within an hour of the law firm can build against it. Hopefully they're not quite that fast with building at least. Um, so here's our US ending in 890. We're now just simulating or sometimes you want to just sync it over right away. So we have this button here in real life. You do not necessarily have to click it. Pump, API call successful, successfully created in simple legal. So let's take a look. When it's there. Okay. It's I know. Okay. So now in simple legal, we refresh, then here we are. So 68890. So we have the matter. We have any information that uh, that has been sent over. So if it's the country code, if it's uh, you know who the lead attorney is, if there are multiple people that need to review any particular invoice or need to be involved in the matter from your teams. So that way, when, when they log into Simple Legal to hopefully get in and get out very quickly, um, they get the invoices that they need to approve and they're back out. And so no one, no one has entered any information here. Uh, we have the opportunity to set up you know, any attributes you want to carry over. So that way, if you are, you know, if certainly in your role, if you're one of the patent attorneys, you can operate inside a portfolio. If you're someone that's more on the operations side, you can operate inside Simple Legal, and you have the data um, in, in either system. Uh, then, from there, you have certainly the, the law firm. So this is our vendor portal. This is, uh, it happens to be called CouncilGo. This law firm, Baker Potts, has just two customers. And if they go to click into one of them, they get to their list of matters, and we'll see here is that same matter. So without anyone manually entering anything, we've seen in IP folio and IP write that exists, it now exists in the e-billing system, is ready for invoices. 
and ready to go to accounts payable. So there's no kind of process here to have to deal with. Uh, and then the law firm or, or the annuity provider or whoever else is going to be billing for this matter, they have this available in their dashboard. And then on top of that, we actually send back the billing ID. So if, if any of you deal with billing, sometimes you're asked for a client matter ID. We send that back through iPhoto, and they're able to send it back to the vendors that are that are involved. So they're not manually entering matters in their system. So, so earlier, Dominic was talking about reducing overhead and kind of reducing some of these extra steps and activities and all the manual activities. With this, we have you, iPfolio, your billing system, your accounts payable system, your vendors, all getting this information without anyone manually retyping it in. Uh, and so with that, that's uh, kind of the, like Rupert said, the fairly simple integration, right? We just link together all these uh, these IP rights into your matters. And so uh, well, it's really the end of my talk there. But any any questions? I mean, certainly when it comes to I don't know how many folks are happy to have one. But before I before I do, just real quick show of hands. How many folks deal with invoices here that you have to approve or kind of push through an emailing system? So oh yeah, you guys know this one then. All right. I'm curious if um, our system with the simple legal has a seeking available for that. Because I've been opening the matters manually. Oh well, then we should talk. <laughs> Because it will, and that way you won't be, you won't have to manually open the matters. It'll come over. You'll have the IP right that is the same IP right you're used to seeing in portfolio with your matter name. Any vendors that you've got linked in there will come through. It all links up. Yeah, we definitely want to get that set for you. Is there, is there anything else? I mean, certainly, does anyone have thoughts on ideas of what billing? Since a lot of you are dealing with billing invoices, I mean, what billing information, if any, would be helpful to send back or to see in my portfolio? The, the fee codes, the tax codes that come through? Yeah, certainly. Any other thoughts there? I know between you and maybe the bar, so. Business units. Business units? Okay. Do you have that now? Yes, I think we should actually show this web time. Last week it showed that we've designed the interface for flexibility, or we, what we always strive to do. So we have so called, I'll just find that right tab again. Matter, thank you, right? I must be. This one. No, it's not, sorry. I'm a Mac user, that's why I'm so clumsy on the PC. It's uh, as far There's a legal, okay, I think this is the main browser with all the tabs. So here's my record. So let's say business unit. For example, we have a business unit that's just a custom field because others have a division or a project or a main technology or as there is a primary um, dimension of categories, categorizing, pocketing um, their portfolio. So here, I think we just take a quick look. Do we have a business unit field here? I think we saw that in Thomas' example, right? And that was the other that was the other system. So here we have a technology area. Let's say these guys don't have, don't have a business unit, they have a technology area, which is either hardware or software, and that is something um, a very important kind of an attribute of all their matters. They want to see that in simple legal. So if they want to do that, we would again go back to the setup area where all the back end configuration stuff is um, done that Tyler took us on the deep dive. We go on the IP right, and we go to the so-called field set. So the field set is just a container where you can, again, by drag and drop, group certain fields for a certain um, functionality configuration. So here we have the e-building attributes, and it is as simple as finding our technology area, dragging it in here to the, so this is a one-time configuration, right? I drag this in here, and from now on, the technology area will sync over to Simple Legal, um, assuming or provided that a field of the same name exists in Simple Legal. And I think in Simple Legal, it is similarly easy to create custom fields. I call them custom attributes, as it is in Simple in Portfolio. So that's typically the things that we work through in implementation. We do it together, try to work, of course, we're learning with each pro project because this is all relatively recent, but we're trying to work as hand in hand um, as possible, 
training our um, customer success teams to understand the other solution. And so someone on the simple legal side will set up that technology area field, make sure it has the same name in both um, systems, and then it just flows over. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Always a risk. Yeah, we'll give it a try. Right. 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 Technology area. Technology. So, so in your e-building system, we can come down and we're going to create a custom attribute. And we're going to call it technology area. And let's just let's see here. Yeah. Also a uh, Mac user, although former Windows user as well. Okay. So I've created this attribute called technology area. We see this is the matter that we had created. It now has a spot available for technology area. And then, I don't know how to get back to your text field. Yeah. So text field is easy because in I put it's a drop down field with discrete values on hardware and software. It's just going to sync over to the text field. If you want a drop down field in simple legal, so non IP users just don't have to create records manual to have the benefit of selecting from a drop down. Then we also must make sure the values match up with the hardware software there. But since we took the easy path here, okay, as a text field, it should actually work right away. So we're going back to our IP, right? That's the one we just synced over. And again, we could wait for the full hour or just hit the button again to make it update. And now the success message should be slightly the existing matter of legal was updated successfully. So let's take a look. I'm just going to refresh the screen here. Tada! Hardware! have IPfolio or Simple Legal, how long would it take to do something like that? <laughs> like with pen and paper? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, if I used a different kind of system. Oh, um, well, the, the reason that this works and the reason that we can do this without a lot of setup or without any sort of files going around it is that you know, IPfolio is built on Salesforce, it's modern software, and they have the ability to make API calls. Right? Our, our software similarly is a modern system, and so we can also make API calls. And so because there is an API connection, it's very easy to do this without defining file specs. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever dealt with, with your current e-billing provider getting information over to, like, uh, say, Oracle or SAP for payments. But you have to sort of get this file spec and send it over, and there's professional services to like, set it up and do all these things, um, because there's not an API. So because there's an API from both systems, um, it's fairly easy it very quickly. Without the API, uh, you're, you're probably looking at some sort of like file you have to transfer and some special services and then some IT resources on your side to be able to um, you know, make, make a lot of it happen. Uh, but with an API, it becomes this easy. So thank you, that was a fantastic question for me to answer. Interest. It's not everyone is an IT geek, not everyone in the room is an IT geek like we are. API is an application programming interface, which means that servers can communicate server to server. So rather than some file be emailed and uploaded, it's just those two servers talk to each other via a secure connection. You can also see what that is safe if you do care for those IT geeks in the room, because I'm sure there are a few. Just again, to give you an idea, all of this setup that's um, I mean, it does take us uh, maybe a day, maybe two, to really work through all the details um, with the customer together with Simple Legal, which are the fields that should be mapped, how exactly are they mapped, and certain customers have some special requirements, but we have to um, actually do a little bit of product development to accommodate that. So it's not, it, it does take a little bit of work, but and, and one of the things that gets set up in the course of that is configuring the so-called remote site. So here you see this IP folio instance connects to the Simple Legal demo instance at demo.simplelegal.com. There are also secure um, like, um, 
codes or code hashes, very rare non ID passwords exchanged and stored in the system so that there is an authentication. Um, so it's a secure transfer of the data from one system to the other. So there's a little bit of setup work and um, work involved. But if you are a big customer, simply you have your own instance, you might have a whatever, a google.simply.com, right? Facebook.simply.com, um, if, if those customers are, um, are simply your customers. So again, we've built all the flexibility to the interface to be able to then configure it with a few clicks and for, for, for the end user, it's just seamless. They never have to think about it again. Yeah, and the goal is definitely just it's the volume that you deal with, right? Like the volume and the pace of the invoices that come through. I mean, we have customers that used to take little cardboard boxes, and then each month they knew, like, all right, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of days. And usually over a weekend, just going through those. So the more that we can, you know, help you speak through uh, the invoices and then deal with the matter of transfer between the systems so that you're not manually entering. We're definitely going to take care of it over here to make sure that you're not manually entering them anymore. Uh, we just want to make it easy at scale. Like that, that's really the key. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, many thanks. Thank you for your time.